everyone, my name is Amy, I'm the Careers Director for UTSOC and I would love to begin tonight by introducing our wonderful panellists. So first up we have Danella, who is a digital and social media specialist at Samsung and is also a UTS alumni who did her Bachelor of Communications majoring in social, uh, digital and social media. She has experience in managing social media across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube and the list goes on and on. Her specialties lie in community management, creating social content and working with in-house marketing teams to deliver awesome social media campaigns. Secondly, we have Jonathan Drennan, who is the State Media and Communications Manager at the AFL. Jonathan has an insane amount of experience spanning across journalism in his writing for the Irish Times and The Guardian. He's also worked in social media, advertising, crisis management and sports media. Next, we have Natalia, who is also a UTS alumni and is currently a, a creative strategist at BuzzFeed. Sorry, that's a bit of a mouthful. She is skilled in creating written content and has previously worked as a strategy coordinator, content manager, and copywriter across a range of companies. Our final panelist for tonight is Mia. She is the marketing manager at Depop Australia. Centred in the creative community, she has also worked as managing editor at Acclaim magazine and has worked closely with brands including Nike, Adidas, Spotify and many more. We are so lucky to have these amazing panellists tonight, so please make them feel welcome. Use your reaction buttons down below for a thumbs up or applause. Um, also, <laughs> thanks everyone. Um, panellists, please feel free to jump in and answer the questions wherever you feel necessary. So. Now that we've got a lot of people here, I'm gonna start off with some questions um, and something which has always been on my mind and I'm sure a lot of university students' minds as well, which is getting experience. So I know you're all at different stages in your career journey, but do you remember what it was like transitioning from your studies into the industry? And what advice would you give to students who are navigating those first few steps of getting some experience under their belt? Maybe Danella, would you like to start? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, to be honest, for me, I remember when I was coming out of uni, I actually didn't want to work full time. I hated it. I was like dreading it. I was like, I will just take a gap year. Like work is not for me. <laughs> you know, I was convinced. I was like, I'm not going to work for at least two years. Um, I did, you know, uni full time while I was working as part time social media coordinator. And that kind of gave me an experience of work. So I was like, oh, this is just it's just not for me. But when I landed kind of my dream job um, at Samsung, I kind of was like, you know what, I can't give this up. I can't pass it. Let me just jump into the deep end. I'm just going to give it a go. And I actually went straight from uni to working at Samsung with very little experience. And I felt very underqualified. I was like, there is no way I'm going to be able to do any of my role. But when I jumped in, I realized how much I actually loved um, the job. I had already quite three years of experience doing doing social media. So I did already have that background while doing university, but that was probably the key for me was getting the experience early on, getting into internships while I was in uni, doing as much experience as I could. And then when I got into my work field, I was able to take the reins and be like, all right, this is what um, work is about and this is what I'm learning. And so for me, what I focus on was not where I'm going to be, um, you know, not the position that I'm going to get in a couple of years. I think sometimes it doesn't work out how you would expect it to be, the time frame you expect it to be. But I think the key for me is what am I going to learn in this role? What am I going to learn right now in the campaigns that I'm building? What experience can I gain? And that's just how I've been tracking along. So my first experience was kind of scary working in, you know, a corporate and being pretty much the youngest there. But now I've been able to really take the reins and, and grow so much that it's like an experience I just can't, um, I would just, you know, regret if I passed it. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that sentiment of being thrown in the deep end. I think a lot of us are feeling that at the moment or will so in the next year or so. Definitely. Um, well, yeah, I saw, I saw you nodding along. Do you want to continue? Yeah, sure. Um, mine was very similar. I actually started doing a lot of writing when I was at uni. So reaching out and kind of pitching myself to different publications, big and small. 
Um, I also did a double degree. So I did communications with international studies. So when I, was, I went over to do my country study in Italy and when I was there, kind of kept a blog, which was more of a photo blog than an actual written blog. Um, but kind of just all these experiences kind of laddered up for me. So then by the time I finished up uni, um, I was fortunate enough to have somebody reach out to me and ask if I was interested in a role um, at a digital publisher. Um, and sorry, if, if those of you don't know, because I definitely didn't know what the media landscape looked like before I actually started working full time. But um, so digital publishers, well, any publishers is kind of like your big websites or different like news stations, platforms. Um, so that could be like, you know, like an ABC radio, that could be a channel 10, that could be a nine honey. Um, and, you know, then there's obviously different like agencies and your different brands or clients that access media space to do their advertising and content. Um, so yeah, I kind of just did things that I was interested in doing in terms of my extracurriculars and work experience. I didn't have a lot of formal work experience placements. It was mainly me, you know, writing for different blogs or different websites and then sharing, you know, whatever I, whatever I'd written on my social media. And I guess I was lucky enough to kind of had built a bit of a network that somebody had taken notice of that. Um, and it also taken notice of the fact that I was good with images, which really helps in a digital space. Um, so I think that kind of opened doors for me. So it wasn't something that I was, I guess, actively working towards, but all those experiences that I'd had and I guess the profile that I was able to accumulate in that time helped me then make that uh, transition into the workforce pretty quickly and painlessly, I'm very fortunate to say. Very lucky. Now, Mia or Jonathan, do you want to share your experience? Do you want to go ahead, Mia? <laughs> I mean, mine's really a good um, segue from there. Um, I mean, to be honest, when I first graduated from high school, I went straight into uni, but I wasn't 100% confident. Much like Danella, I just like wasn't ready to like commit to school. Uh, I did commit to a few years and then pretty much like took a leave of absence and like went and lived my life. So somewhere along the line, I realized that education was super important to me. And I went to RMIT, which is very similar to UTS in Melbourne um, and went back and studied comms for the second time. Uh, and honestly, the first time I think what held me back was outside of severe FOMO of life. Um, I was really concerned with like what my friends would think of me if I really put myself out there and tried to like be successful. I don't know why I just like had this very big like chip on my shoulder that like if I made an effort it would be lame or something. So when I got back to school the second time round, honestly, like I realized how much that didn't apply and how much all of those people that I was worried about like didn't actually have like an influence on my life later on. So when I went back to school the second time, I just threw myself at it. Like beyond just like, I guess, classwork and like trying to get good grades, I did the most. Like I worked at like student publications and student media. I did internships literally everywhere. Um, much like Natalia, I use the internet to my advantage. Like I've been on literally every social media channel since like the dawn of time. So <laughs> I like started my own blogs and websites and even just like my own social pages, like from MySpace to Facebook to Instagram, like I very much like use that to kind of build my network and build my portfolio. So by the time, um, you know, eventually I'd start publishing and writing like for other publications that I liked and uh, started interviewing people for publications. And by the time I was in my final year, I was, I got my first paid job um, in event management. So, you know, and then it was just more about the balance of like trying to understand how to prioritize like school and work and like where that balance was between getting experience and like maintaining study. Um, so yeah, like I would definitely say that it was a challenging um, experience, but Honestly, if you're in that position that I was in the first time round, like if I could do things differently, I would 100% like commit 
to the first time around and like not worry so much about like the social pressures of uh, external life because I mean I definitely had some positives that came from that as well such as networking but um, I could have done things a lot quicker if I had by myself so definitely do as much experience as you can get your hands on and yeah try to try to get good grades as much as possible thanks Mia Jonathan so I hope I'm right in saying I actually think that I might be the oldest person on the panel here which is um a bit embarrassing but so I'm 34 and I wanted to go back and talk about when I graduated which was 2009 in Ireland it was such a difficult time and I and I hopefully like what I'm going to tell you might help you all because at the moment, I think um, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety. What's the future going to hold? I went through those exact same things because in 2009, Ireland basically had the huge recession and nobody does panic quite like Irish people. I mean, Australians, you guys seem to just, I don't know, maybe it's the vitamin D or something, but you just handle it a bit better. Um, absolute panic. I remember going to lectures and so I did a I did a degree in English literature which um was like looking back probably really interesting but a bit indulgent and then I all I ever wanted to do was be a journalist so I did a master's in journalism and we would get people coming in just telling us there's no way you're going to get a job which wasn't exactly helpful at the time but the lessons I took out of it was you can at 34 and, and looking back to that really scared 21, 22 year old is you can control what you can control. So some of um, the other panelists here have been telling you, like, it's so true. Any experience is good experience. I saw one of the questions, how do you get um, experience or a portfolio? Never discount anything. Um, and I thought what Mia was saying was spot on, like, run your own race. If you compare, you despair. It's just like, I wish I'd known that when I was 20, 21 and this sort of anxious kid, like experience anywhere. And I mean, anywhere is good. So whether it's writing a newsletter for the North Shore Bombers women's AFL team, like that's great experience or doing videos for them. Don't feel that you have to go in and, oh my goodness, like I'm not writing for the Guardian at 21. What am I doing with my life? Just get any kind of experience you can do voluntarily or otherwise and do something you love. Um, and then what I would say, giving advice I couldn't follow at 21, just don't panic so much about the future because do you know what? Like it might not happen in a year. It might not even happen in two years, but eventually if you keep on doing the things that you're passionate about, it will follow. Um, so I just wanted to reassure you because often when you're a student, it's a really like personally, maybe others don't feel it, but I felt so much anxiety coming out of university and just going, it's a big, bad world. What's going to happen? And the best way to control that is obviously, you know, get your grades and stuff. But for me, more importantly, just get experience anywhere and everywhere, no matter what it is, whether it's doing a cool blog in Italy and um, like Natalia or, um, you know, going in as a social media coordinator or just working on your uni newspaper it's all valid. So that's what I would say. Any experience is great experience. Thank you, Jonathan. That's so helpful. It's really interesting to hear how you all had those like slightly different challenges and me as well with that, like balancing, you know, um, comparing yourself, even, you know, if it's just a tiny bit of experience or a bit more really helpful guys. Thank you so much. Um, following on from that transitioning stage, I guess, out of uni, are there any key skills that you think, students should be looking to develop or perhaps maybe that helped you stand out when you were applying for jobs or you know transitioning into the industry Mia do you want to take off hey. um, honestly social skills like I think when you consider studying communications it's all like so theory based and you're writing and it's all about writing it's all about text but I think what people don't necessarily consider is that it is actually a lot of talking. Like you need to be able to talk to anyone. Um, and for me, like that's been such a big standout. Like, I mean, even in terms of applying for jobs, like you can send in your resume and you can send in all the things that you need to send in, but you still have to do an interview. Um, you know, and honestly, like, again, it's the networking element. Like if I hadn't um, been out there socializing, going to gigs, going to shows, going, 
anywhere and just like talking to people I probably wouldn't be able to like hold a conversation down and I think it's very much like you know honing in on those skills in every aspect of the word like you know as Jonathan was saying like all experiences good experience like for me the best like the best experience I ever had um, in terms of flexing my communication skills was working in retail like through high school through uni like just literally being on the shop floor and talking to the most random people whether it was working like in fashion retail or it was like working at Dan Murphy's like I would talk to people all day long and it's honestly helped me so much in my career now because I do actually have to speak to people from all walks of life so while like you know you might be doing your side job at uni just like hating life um you got to see the positives and like the things that you can take away from that and yeah when you're in like a pitch meeting talking to strangers like you'll be really thankful for the time that you talk to those randoms on the shop floor. So um, I definitely think like practice makes perfect. Just get out there and talk to as many people as you can. And like, you'll start to find, I think like through that, you'll start to find your tone um, and it will translate into like your written communication skills as well. You've just given me confidence that my retail job is worth a lot more. <laughs> I actually um, miss working in retail. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, you do get to talk a lot. <laughs> And Natalia, do you want to continue? Yeah, I, that was very similar to what I was going to say. Um, I would say that I think the most important skill that I've learned is how to ask for opportunities. Um, and I think that when I was younger, I was really preoccupied with perfecting the work that I was doing. Like anything that I was writing, I would agonize a lot over, you know, like a blog post that I was putting out or you know, a pitch email that I was sending to different um, blogs or websites. And I think that I had built it up in my head and that like, if I was going to get rejected, it would be the end of the world. Um, but actually any kind of no is actually a chance to just have a conversation and get some feedback. Um, I'm working at BuzzFeed. Um, we have like a lot of external contributors that come on board. Like most of the time, like it's not a no, like we have budget and we, we, we want content. So it's just like working with people that pitch to like tweak their ideas to make sure it's correct. So I think it's like much easier being on the other side now. Um, it's kind of taken out a lot of the anxiety, but yeah. So learning how to ask for opportunities. Um, but before you get to that, I think it's, it's, you're comfortable asking friends for favors and you're comfortable doing favors for friends. So I would, I tried looking at networking as more of an opportunity just to make mates. Um, and then kind of when you have those relationships with people, you can ask them, you know, asking really good questions. Like, you know, if you meet someone that works at, I don't know, Time Out or some cool publication that you'd love to work for, like pick their brain. Be like, oh my God, that's so cool. Like, what does your job look like? What's like the biggest challenges for you guys? If you can find out like, you know, they might say, oh, I'm, I'm really trying to look for, you know, a, a writer to cover this topic or, you know, for this, this particular brief that we have for a client. I mean, that's always like an opportunity for you to step up or for you to recommend someone that you know, like adding value to people and like trying to kind of uncover what they're struggling with. I think it all comes down to like, um, like what Mia was saying, it's about like sales skills and just so sales isn't just like asking, it's understanding how to kind of, I guess, uncover what people need and then figuring out how you can add value for them. I think that that's what's been the most, uh, I think, game changing for me. It's really helped me get my foot into a lot of doors that I probably was very underqualified for. <laughs> but, you know, if, you, if lots of people don't ask. So if you're asking, you're like ahead of most. Perfect. It's about like selling, almost like selling yourself, right? You're pitching yourself to someone else. Yeah, but I think it's a real skill because like I lean more into the making friends thing and like looking for value rather than, you know, because no one wants to feel like ambushed, like yeah. they like catch themselves in a sales pitch. So I think it is a bit of an art, but yeah, for sure. I, I would say that those are really important skills. Thank you. Um, Jonathan or Danella? Jump in. Um, or right, Dana, do you want to go oh, ahead? No, you can go first. <laughs> uh, no worries. Um, so it's a few things. So I think 
the first thing is I would say, and I always find this at university, was whenever people would ask about how um, you know I'd got a certain job or whatever, I'd always just say because I got some experience. So it goes back to getting any sort of experience. I think um, I lack a bit of patience with people like, oh, I want to work in the AFL, and I'm like, all right, cool. Like, what have you done? And they're like, no, nah, I just like watching it. And you're like okay so like and they're like oh where would i find out opportunities and you're like where do you live and they're like oh i don't know st leonard's and you're like well you do know there's like a really thriving club there and the women's team have no content like why not just go down with your camera phone and help them oh cool that's a good idea and you're like it's actually not rocket science so that's just afl and when i worked as a journalist it was the same thing you know people would be like oh i want to work for the guardian or i want to work for the irish times and i'm like okay cool so can you show me some of your uni articles? Like for, I don't know, I'm sure you've got a uni newspaper. They're like, oh, no, I don't, I don't do it. And you're like, well, it's not much to ask for a blog or whatever. So first thing is like, just go back to that. Like to, for me, it's just so simple. It's just like get experience. And, and don't say there is no experience because there is, you know, it's like, it doesn't have to be ABC News or it doesn't have, like it can be anything, right? So just get experience. The second thing is, um natalia was, was spot on and, and me as well it's like to me it's the things that aren't taught in the classroom so this probably won't go down too well and i did study hard and i got like relatively good grades don't know what the equivalent is in australia but i think as important if not more important is the relationships you build outside of the classroom and how do you deal with people so i think it's the same in uts as it was for me in ireland like you're meeting people from all over the world different backgrounds um, how can you get on with them? Because you're going to have to do that and work. And also like to go to the networking thing. I hate the word networking because to me, it sounds really parasitical. I would be more like Natalia. It's like, I'd actually rather build a genuine relationship with you. So it's not like just one way traffic. I think I, personally, I just find it really parasitical and I can see through it. Um, so I would always try and add value both ways. So I don't know, like if you want to work on Samsung or Buzzfeed or whatever, it's like, oh, cool. I thought like, you know, you guys are the perfect age bracket. I mean, I'm 34. Like, I don't even know how to like use TikTok. Well, I do, but you know, I, I struggle and like, I don't have an account, but I do know how to use it. But you guys have so much to offer. So, and then the, yeah, just saw a question there um, about post-grad study. Again, like I, I have a master's degree in journalism and not to discount, because you know me i was saying like how much you got out of her studies and personally i'm just like i go back to experience i just think try to get out there get that job as a social media coordinator um and and just get out there and then like you will learn on the job like that so experience experience and try to build those relationships outside of the classroom um yeah, I feel like all the everyone just covered really great points. It basically stole what I was going to say. But um, I think for me, two things. The top one is, like they've said, is communication. Uh, and not even just social communication. I would consider myself as an extrovert per se. And I, you know, I love socializing and hanging out with people. But once I got into the work field, it was like, I was just the biggest introvert you'd ever seen. I remember the first three months, my coworkers thought I was like almost mute because I would never talk. I would just sit there, have my lunch by myself and then just go home. And for me, like I was learning this, like professional communication was not something I was used to, to be able to be confident and know what you're talking about. Like it's sometimes it's in your head, but it, being able to execute it and actually talk about it, you're just like stuck. And especially for me, um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are, you know, in your very early twenties, I came in, you know, I'm still, I just turned 23. So I'm working with like 30 year olds in my field and having to direct them on their campaigns and how to run social media. I'm sitting there like, you know, how do I do a presentation? For you're, teaching me, you're teaching me how to use TikTok. You're yeah, to literally. That, I literally, my, my job is teaching traditional marketers, people who have been in the industry for 30, 40 years, how to use TikTok, explain to them what is influencer marketing. And at first I thought, oh, this is all cool. It's all the glitz and glam of working in marketing. And then you get there and you're just like, these people, like I'm, 
I have to educate these people. I have to actually teach yeah. them and how to use these social media. It's not like I come in, you have a big budget. Yeah, I can do this and that. So I really had to learn how to um, educate and teach traditional marketers, senior stakeholders, even, um, you know, our HOD, how to use these platforms, how to understand the different audiences, their different behaviors and patterns and trends and trying to simplify everything down. Um, and it was hard. I, I would tell you for the first year and a half of me working, I was like beaten down so many times. I felt discouraged. I was like, I just got out of that, that presentation and I feel like everyone was staring at me and I would have just like just cried. And so it, it was scary and it wasn't easy. But the thing is, um, I learned, I kept going and I was like, you know what, I'll pick myself up again. I got this. And like they all said, work is really experience. So you're, you're never going to be the perfect marketer. You're never going to, especially coming in, a lot of the times we get really like, we think, oh, I'm going to smash everything. And then someone slaps you in the face and you're like, crap, like your ego is just bruised. And that was what I had to learn is communication is not about just, you know, walking in there and being like, oh yeah, I, I know what I'm talking about, but it's also just taking it one step at a time. You know, how do I first, you know, uh, theorize what I'm saying? How do I, you know, consolidate a deck or presentation and be able to be confident in what I'm doing and actually research, doing the amount of research, being able to, to communicate that to stakeholders. Um, so that was probably the main thing is learning how to communicate, but also just taking it one step at a time, if that makes sense, not being too hard of yourself. If you can't nail your first presentation, your first pitch, if you can't um, get the first things right, because you're constantly learning um, and then probably listening to people. I think a lot of the times as communicators, we just love to talk. We don't listen. Um, and sometimes it's just listening to people's advice, listening when someone tells you, Hey, why don't you change your pitch to be this direction or maybe slightly pivot, you know, you're, you're going in industries and whatever workplace you're in, you're stepping into a place with people with 30, 40 years experience. So don't discredit what advice and what um, wisdom and knowledge they can give you. They might be able to impart something that you haven't learnt before. So I remember when I was in uni, I had my friend say, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I, I wish I got an internship early on. And I was like, crap. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's throw myself in the deep end, get any internship. I remember my first internship was actually the worst thing I've ever done, but it actually looked really good on my resume. So I was like, okay, that's all right. But it wasn't that great. Like my boss wasn't supportive. She was a bit crazy. Like she was a bit weird, but it was experience. It was something that I got to learn and actually be able to learn how to copyright and all that. So I would say, yeah, first is just communication, like learning and learning on the job. So don't think straight after uni, you're going to be this professional communicator, but keep it in mind that everything you do is practicing. Like um, Mia said in retail or even talking to your friends and um, whatever it is in your day-to-day -day life, pick up those communication skills and how to professionally speak to people. Um, and then listen, I would say just listen to other people's advice. So Danella, would you say that, um, like, cause I'm really interested in how to, you know, professionally communicate, would you say that's like just a process of like, you know, toughing it out essentially, like getting that experience and going into the deep end? Oh my gosh. Like a hundred percent for me anyway, I remember I had to do my first big pitch a couple like years back um, when I first started my role and I remember I had to do this like I had the agency, I had my uh, marketing managers and there was me and I had to lead this meeting. I sat there and I just stared. I remember I just sat there and was just like, and then my boss had to take over. Literally, it was so embarrassing. Um, and then I was just dreading. I couldn't even look at my marketing managers in the eye. And I'm just telling you guys, this is when, when someone says they're underqualified, I was underqualified. I like knew the theory, but actually getting there, I was like, I can't say any of this stuff. How am I going to tell someone who's like 40 or 50 how they should run their campaign? But then after kind of going through that and after actually doing more research and then actually talking to my managers and asking for their advice and practicing, I practiced a lot. Um, I practiced at home. I practiced in the mirror. I would do my decks over and over again because I'm just not naturally... I just feel like I was not naturally, you know, that communicative in terms of professional context. Um, and then I did another presentation and I improved. I did another pres presentation. I improved. So thankfully I had very forgiving managers that believed in me. And now 
a year after that, I actually, my manager was like, I can't believe how much you have grown. Like you have grown so much in the past year to be able to, to, you know, start from just shaking to being where you are now. And I was like, oh, wow. And it was not just me magically, like overnight, it was a progression and it's in change. And I think, yeah, a lot of the times some people are just really good at their job off the bat. For me, it was like, I was really good at theory. I was really good at doing the work and implementation, but actually having to say it was the hard part. Um, but yeah, just sometimes you just got to do it, right? To to know how to uh, ex- be an expert in that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to um, flip to one last question before we go to open Q&A. But Danelle, I'm actually going to throw it back to you because I'm interested how... Um, such an amazing job and all of you have such impressive titles um i'm going to start by saying it's it's in communications i feel like it's not what you know it's who you know um and i'm interested to know how all of you actually landed the position you're in now yeah i feel like I don't know if I'm the best to say this, but I just feel like the way I got my job was from, was an accident. I, like I told you, I wasn't looking for a full-time role. So I was at my old job in a marketing market research firm. And I was like, you know, I was literally on social media. Um, my demographic was 70 year olds. So if you can imagine um, 70 year olds on Facebook is not a great, you know, that it's just, it's, it's a little difficult, but I went on like a applying spree and I just applied for resumes. And actually before that, I, cause I did digital social media the second year it came to UTS. So I remember, I don't know if I should say this, but the lecturers were like, you guys are sort of guinea pigs. So you're going to, um, we're going to test this course and you guys are going to be on the deep end. I was like, really? So there was no examples. There was nothing. So I didn't really have like other people to help me. You know, it was really new. I actually, the way I found my job was how I found it was even a field. I just saw a girl on Instagram who was a digital social media coordinator. I emailed her and I asked for her LinkedIn page and I was like, what the heck is your job? And then she gave me advice. Um, And then that's how I kind of fell on the track. So then I applied for all these jobs, 30, and then I got a call from Samsung, which was the only job that came back to me. And I was, and they were like, you applied. I was like, no, I didn't. Like, I literally didn't think I applied for the role because it just had the agency and not the actual business name. And then, um, yeah, I went in on the interview and they were like, we like you, can you start? And I was like, oh, wow. But for me, I, I really think, um, I tell this to a lot of people is when you're finding your first job or a job in your field, even if you're not, familiar is talk to industry professionals. Like, you know, you guys are in this panel now. I would say that's how it helped me build the confidence because they gave me real life advice. They were like, this is how the job is going to be. This is the challenges. And I've had um, people, you know, DM me and ask me, what is my role like? And I would just tell them being honest, this is what experience you need. So don't be afraid to just communicate. Even if you don't know anyone in the industry, like I didn't, I didn't have any connections per se. Um, I reached out to people in that industry and I just went for it and I would have coffees with them or I would just email them or talk to them on LinkedIn and people are more than happy to give you that experience and that advice. Um, So that's, you know, how I landed my role really. Awesome. Um, Mia, how did you become marketing manager of Depop? Uh, There's probably two things to flag here. I guess like for me, um, with all of my dream jobs, like basically my dream internship in music PR and then my dream job as like a managing editor in publishing. And then also my dream job as marketing manager at Depop, like every single one has come to me because I know this is going to sound like co-star juju, but like, honestly, I manifested all of them. Like basically I think people think of manifesting as like throwing a wish out into the air and just like hoping it sticks and like it'll just come and land in your lap. But for me, that was very much like, okay, it's essentially goal setting. You essentially just like decide what it is that you want and then like create a path to make it happen. And for me, it was like, okay, cool. When I wanted to work in music PR, it was like, what does that look like? And then like, what do I need to get there? And same with publishing and same with marketing. It was very much like, cool this is the job that I want. What does that job require? And then from there, once I knew what the skills that I needed were, like I very much like shortlisted like 
10 companies that I felt were aligned with my value system. And then once I figured out what those jobs were and which companies they were, it'd be like looking at like, you know, that job in a different territory or that job um, as a job description to see like what skills I had and what, I mean, the most important thing at that point was like what skills I didn't have. Um, and I guess this is where the manifesting comes through because like by looking at what you don't have, it was very much like, okay, well, how do I upskill as soon as possible so that I feel confident that I can get this job. Um, so for me, when it was, I didn't have an experience in music PR, I threw myself into the music industry to like actually understand what that was. And like, for me, that was going to gigs, getting to know musicians, understanding what their pain points were and knowing that what, like what they would require from a publicist. And likewise with publishing, it was like, what publications will I read and what do I want to see from them? And like, how do I deliver that value proposition to like a readership? And then likewise with um, Depop, like, I mean, the way that I really started at Depop was I became a seller. Like I started shopping on there maybe like four years ago. Um, <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, I started shopping on there and then I very much started selling on there. And I've like honestly been flipping stuff since I was like 14. I think I started on, I think I've sold on like every platform. But when I found Depop, it was like, oh my God, this community is amazing. Like they just get me, they're buying my stuff. I also think everyone's really sweet. Like in the DMs, they're so cute. They use emojis, love it. So by the time I had actually applied for my job at Depop, it was like, I had been on the platform. I'd like identified all of the things that I thought were lacking or the things that could be done better or the ways that like I would want to communicate if I did work there. Um, and like, you know, again, that manifesting process like, I think, you know, we talked about it earlier. I can't remember who said it, but like networking, I mean, Jonathan, you said it as well. Like networking can be really like slimy. I think like the idea of networking is a bit cringe. Like you don't want to ambush anybody and make them feel like you're coming at them. And, you know, Dylan said it as well, like as communicators, often we don't listen. It's a lot of like talking at people. So um, yeah, I think that was definitely something to consider. And like, by the time um, I came around to knowing that like, I needed to be the market manager for Depop when it did come to Australia. Like, I mean, it's a UK based company. Um, you know, I'd seen like one of our staff members, Leo was like on the ground, very much like running the gauntlet for a year before, you know, the rest of the team kind of was formed. And, um, you know, I'd seen things that had happened. I'd looked at what was happening globally. At that point I was like, this is my job to lose. Like I pretty much lost all sense of chill and started hitting up global in any way possible. Like I emailed whoever I needed to email. When I didn't hear back, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna take ownership of this. I'm not gonna wait around for them to start advertising whenever that might be. I basically made myself known, like I really improved my shop and like tried to get noticed in that way. Like I built my co-signs, my portfolio. Like I started updating my LinkedIn. I started doing like press ops. I mean, obviously I was already working in the industry, like through publishing and also my agency work. Like I just kind of made myself known to the people that needed to know me. And you know what, like consistently between like making myself known through my own channels um, and also like hitting up people that needed to know about me, eventually I got the email back from HR because eventually our country manager who was working in the UK and then came to be the country manager here in Australia, like. Honestly, the HR guy was like, hey, Ari, can you just talk to this girl from Australia? She won't go away. And then we had a call. And like, lo and behold, a lot of interviews later, like, this is my job now. And I'm so lucky and so proud that like, I work for Depop because like, when I was shortlisting, like it got to a point in my career where I was like, cool, I've done all of the jobs that I wanted to do. Like, it's not even about what job I want anymore. It was like, for me, like the most important thing was like working for someone that really again upheld my value system like I need to make sure that whoever, whoever I was going to work for next was going to be um very inclusive I needed to know there was women in leadership I needed to know that like what we were doing was good work for like the future um and I really wanted to work with youth I mean I've been working in youth culture for a while but like for me I really wanted to work with young people so like Depop is very much made up of Gen Z uh, most of our users are under the age of 26 and I thought that was really awesome um so yeah i guess like manifest it and don't just manifest it by throwing it in the air just like 
go and get it. Like, don't wait around because like, if I had waited around for people to start advertising in Australia, like I would have had so much more competition. But again, like I said, at that point, it was mine to lose. So yeah, I think master your craft of like networking in a way that is cute and not thirsty (laughs) by socializing and like doing your time. Like, like I said, on the shop floor, like whatever it takes, um, get that experience. So by the time you get that call back, you get that email back, like you're not just talking shit. Like you're literally, you know, you can actually stand up behind what you said about yourself so that when they do (laughs) look you up and like do call your references, like you actually are qualified for the job. Thank you so much, Mia. I love what you said about like make yourself known. I really I admire mm-hmm. that. Um, Jonathan, did you want to continue? Yes. Um, no worries at all. So with AFL, I always had this thing where uh, I was just obsessed with sport when I was younger and I always had this dream to work in sport and it only happened when I was about 31 or something. So it was a long time to get there. But a bit like with me, I was saying you have to almost make your own luck. And after me saying how much I hate word networking, because it's just so parasitical. Um, the way mine happened, I suppose, was through people I knew. So basically, I had always kept writing for The Guardian and completely bizarrely, such a weird story, but I was at a game with my wife, well, my now wife, and in front of us at the Sydney Cricket Ground at a Swans game, this little boy was blind. And his best friend was commentating for him in the game. Now, I'm a bit of a sap, or maybe that's Irish. I get quite emotional at things. Um, so I was like, oh, my God, it's really beautiful. And my wife's like, she's French, so she's a bit tougher about these things. She's like, oh, whatever. But I'm like, no, that's really beautiful. So anyway, I tweeted it to the Swans. It's like, saw a really beautiful thing tonight. This young blind kid and his best friend was commentating for him. Anyway, now this is where it gets weird. The Swans were like, oh, my God, that's amazing. We want to bring him into the Swans. So it's this mad rush. I don't know if any of you guys saw this. It went on TV and stuff. It was this crazy rush to try and find the kid because I didn't know who it was. Through social media, we eventually located the kid. Then I wrote a story for The Guardian on it because I was writing for The Guardian. Then that blew up. Then, um, then they were nominated for this global award. And they didn't win. They, but like it, it went massive. And like Turnbull was tweeting about nominating them and Shane Warren and stuff. But through that, all that stuff, I didn't really care about a job, but I got to know the head of comms at the Swans. And we, we became friends because, again, like I'm not interested in networking for networking's sake. I'd rather make a friend exactly like Natalia. And then I always said to her, like, I was like, listen, if anything ever comes up, just let me know. And she said, right, the head of um, comms role for uh, AFL New South Wales ACT has come up. I think you'd be great. I was like, there's no way I'm qualified for that. I'm like, first of all, head of comms. And like, most people can't even understand me. And I'm, and I'm Northern Irish and I'm in Australian football. I'd be the only foreigner there. She's like, no, 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 I think you'd be good. Anyway, I was like, well, what have I got to lose? So I went for it and did a good interview. Then I went to second, then I went to third. And then I said to my wife, oh my God, but like me and B-pop, I was like, I got obsessive. I was like, oh my God, like I have to make this happen. And I was offered the opportunity. And you know what? I was so not ready. Um, like three years ago, like I had to do massive budgets, uh, hire and manage a team, which was a huge step up for me. Um, like learn finance. I'm basically a numerate and I was managing a budget of half a million. Um, so yeah, so I suppose it, it all goes back to what we've been saying. It was like, At 21, I couldn't have known where all these different experiences would land. And I mean, when I left uni, I was a teacher, right? And I taught English in Calcutta in India. And like, there's a legion of poor Indian kids who have a Northern Irish accent, but that experience was amazing. And uh, it's like every single experience you do can lead you on to the next thing. So yeah, I would just say like, mine's pretty, pretty weird journey, but that's how it happened. That's an awesome story, Jonathan. I feel like there's a theme of like being thrown into the deep end of life, which um, has been common. Um, I also just want to say that on that topic of building relationships and stuff, um, I actually met Jonathan at an AFL game about a year and a half, two years ago. So 
you never know when you'll need to call upon your connections. Um, <laughs> that sort of thing. Natalia, you can continue. Cool. Um, mine is very similar to what everyone was saying. I basically, I got most of my jobs through friends or people that I knew. Um, and it wasn't like I was hungrily like hitting people up for work. I think it was just like you have conversations with people, you get to know them and then it's like right place, right time situation. Um, so yeah, I kind of, when I got my start in the industry, um, I was working at Mamma Mia. And so I knew some people that were working there that I guess I just been like keeping up with, you know, the blog posts and articles and photos and stuff that I was posting all over my social media. Um, and what gents, tends to happen, which I didn't know until I kind of got in the industry, um, I think especially in media, things move pretty quickly. So if someone leaves, you know, that means like there are still clients that we need to service, you know, still campaigns that we need to action at certain times. So they need to find replacements quick. And what usually happens is that it's like, hey, does anyone know anyone? That would be good. Um, and then so like luckily I was one of those people that like somebody knew and was like, oh yeah, I think Natalia would be good. So that's kind of how I got my first um step into uh into the industry. And then when I was there, like again, like networking and same, like it's such a crappy word, but just making friends with people that you work with, you know, like go out for drinks on a Friday night, like organize if you you know you meet some of your like best friends at work so socialize with them after hours and it's it's something that you do organically you don't think that like oh this is someone that I need to like hold on to you just are kind of gravitated towards certain people um you know and you build those relationships over time so then what ends up happening okay so you enter a workplace and there's you know mama mia I think at the time there was like 100 people so I got to know my immediate team which was like five people and the wider team which was probably like 25 people like pretty well so I'm you know meeting at least a quarter of the company that I know decently well they all then go off to their different places and suddenly like you know probably people at like 25 different companies um and it only kind of takes that one person to get the you know help you get in which is it feels like very Lady Gaga Bradley Cooper-esque but it's true like you only need to know you only need to have one connection um and someone that's going to vouch for you of course like the quality of your work needs to be good you know the way that you need the way that you deal with people needs to be excellent because no one's going to want to refer you if they don't wholeheartedly believe that you'd be good for the job um but then I actually, so I worked at some like creative agencies. I actually uh, stopped working full time for a year and was freelancing because I was kind of like working my own startup. So I kind of just ventured out on my own to do my own thing. But then even, so I do a lot of sports, like I'm really into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and a lot of my freelancing work actually came from just friends at Jiu Jitsu. Like, because everyone kind of comes from this very different backgrounds. Like people had their own digital marketing agencies, you know, people were, like lawyers or had their own businesses and like needed websites they needed up doing. And like, I could do that, you know, and a lot of them were smaller businesses that just needed help real quick. And I was there and I was willing, you know? Um, so that is another way where I kind of like built up more experience. So I kind of ventured out from more um, editorial and branded content work more into copywriting. And I like learned a whole lot about SEO and optimizing websites and stuff just because they needed someone and I was there and I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to build the plane on the way down. Um, but then, uh, so what ends up happening, the way I got into Buzzfeed was when I was freelancing, like someone I'd worked with at a creative agency, he headed, he got a job. She works for Buzzfeed. Yeah. Hi, I do. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, uh, a guy that I used to work with at a creative agency who was a lot more senior than me, but again, like we'd worked on some projects together and um, gotten along really well. Um, he, he got a job heading up the creative team at Buzzfeed and basically called me one day and was like, Hey, what are you doing this week? I need a freelancer. And I was like, yep, I'm freelancing. I'm free. Like made myself available. 
um, and was freelancing for BuzzFeed, like not full time or anything like that, but consistently for nine months until a, a job opened up. And at that point, like they, cause I was there all the time. I, you know, knew people, I managed to get myself to appear in some videos. Um, so, you know, I kind of got the heads up that a role was opening up before it even went public. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things like make friends, keep, you know, if you are freelancing or anything, if possible, go in and work at the office, like take people out for coffees, have lunch with people, like become friends and build as many relationships as you can, because then you're kind of top of mind, you know? Um, and once I was at Buzzfeed, I was in a content producer role for about a year. And then I kind of made my own role to be honest. Um, so I saw that once I was there, they needed a lot more work with strategy when it came to servicing the advertising partners. Um, and I saw that we were losing out um, a lot of competitive briefs to other publishers because we didn't have as strong as a strategic offering. We did, it just wasn't being communicated well. So I could kind of see where I could add extra value for the company. Um, and, you know, I got really positive feedback from the sales team and from, you know, more senior people in the content team about the work I was doing, kind of got recognized for that. Um, and basically floated the idea. I was like, I'd love to do more of this. Like, can I do more? Is there any way I can be of more service to the sales team? Where to the point where, you know, one of the senior sales people was like, I need Nat as a strategist full time. Um, so I kind of really kind of made, created my own position, um, basically because I could see where I could add value where no one else was. Great advice. Thank you, Natalia. Also, thank you all of you. That was really, really insightful. Um, I'm going to flip over now to the open Q and A. So if any students have any questions, please put them in the chat and we'll work through them quickly. Um, I'm just going to scroll back to the top. So I'm seeing a lot of like COVID related questions. Uh, so the first one is how do you recommend trying to find experience or build a portfolio during a pandemic? Now, does any of you have an experience or advice on this topic? I, sorry, I'm going to jump in. Um, I work in digital and like a lot of us do, but digital, you don't need to be face to face. You know, like you can literally just start your own blog, like whether it's a Tumblr or whatever, and just start writing stuff um, and pitch yourself out to different blogs, publishers, whatever it might be. Um, you don't you don't have to physically be in an office. Um, if you're confident and good on a phone call or on a Zoom call, I would definitely recommend trying to get someone on a phone or trying to get someone face to face to like, um, you know, ask for feedback on your pitches or like introduce yourself like, Hey, can I have 10, 15 minutes of your time? How can I help out with whatever you guys are doing? Um, I, I know personally, I'm, I'm super happy when people approach me in that way. I think probably because I did that a lot and I do that a lot. So I feel like it's like giving back, you know? Um, but I don't think many people do that. I would just say, just start doing it and start, you know, whether it's writing or you're a video producer or, you know, you've got your own podcast, keep doing it, make it more consistent, um, you know, figure out how to make social media work for you and get some recognition. Like you, you can just start. And I would actually just say, just, just do it in a digital space. It doesn't matter whether you're in an office or working from home. I would love to jump in on that as well. Like I completely support that. I mean, Again, I also work in a digital space and like while we do a lot of IRL um, when there isn't a pandemic, um, I mean, for us, it's like so much of our community, like we pay attention to them all the time. Like we probably don't actively reach out all the time, but like, like I said, I was a seller before I worked for Depop. So, you know, use the platforms that you want to work for. Um, another thing is like building your audience I think that's so important and something you can really be fostering right now like when I started doing it, it was like I said I had social platforms like Tumblr and MySpace and Facebook but like now you've got everything like 
honestly, Medium is such a good channel. Like my partner's been writing Medium articles and it's like, why wait for a publisher to publish you and work with an editor when you can just write whatever you want right now and build a cult following? Like Medium's got an audience waiting for you. And if writing isn't your medium, like honestly, YouTube, like I'm addicted to watching YouTube and vlogs. Like I just watch Emma Chamberlain and like, Whoever else I was, I'm watching a new one. Um, what's his name? All gas, no breaks. Like he's an excellent journalist that just like now he's been signed to Abso with like Tim and Eric. Like that's amazing. Or like Friendly Geordies is like creating a whole new lane for like political journalists. I think there's really no excuse to not try and start something. Like you look at Casey Neistat or you look at H3. It's just like these people work for themselves, and even people that work for other publishers go off and like branch off. I think like Maddie Matheson is like got his own channel now and he's not really working with another publisher. So why not start that now and build that audience while we're in a pandemic and you want nothing else to do? Um, there's really nothing holding you back. Like I think, again, the sentiment throughout this whole thing with everyone that's been speaking is don't wait. Um, and like I said, there is no FOMO to be had when everyone is trapped inside during a pandemic. So make the most of it. <laughs> It's a good point. Jonathan, I know you were about to say something. Maybe you can, um, I'm just going to combine this question in with that. So what, what would be the best way to reach out during, or like to want to, you know, how do you reach out to companies that you'd like to work with um, during this time? I think uh, use, use your, your strengths to your advantage. So when Mia was talking or Natalia, it just reminds me that this generation the generation I'm talking to now who are just graduating, probably in some ways the most entrepreneurial generation there's ever been, um, certainly digitally. I mean, so, you know, like granddad talking here, but when I left uni, like YouTube was like Casey Neistat was just starting. So it was really, really basic. Whereas now it doesn't matter like if it's a hundred views or whatever, the majority of people on this call or sorry, the Zoom now will be able to make video and do basic editing. So much of what I look for when I'm hiring is actual tangible skills. So, right, can you write? You can do that at a university newspaper or a medium. Can you do video editing? I'm not saying it needs to be like Fox Studios, but like, like you know, we all, well, hopefully most of us have computers with basic editing software. Like, just shoot anything. Like, and, and you know, like if you want to get into sport, go and support like your local football team and like offer to help them and there'll be someone there to teach you so just like get that tangible experience and now is the time to build it um and then yeah like so so for example i hired a guy who's our social media lead who is like 21 he was still at university and and he graduated basically snatched him out and i and like to be blunt i didn't look at his marks which is i shouldn't be saying this but i didn't what i did look at was work he had tangibly done and um, he had done this whole amazing brand strategy for like a football team in Canberra. He was paid like nothing. He's paid like 500 bucks to do it. But I was just like, wow, he actually had a tangible product to show me about how he could make the AFL better. So it could be something like, I don't know, like if you're really into fashion or something and you're saying to me, you're like, I don't know, like look what I've done with my shop or um, like, Look, I did this cool video on on vintage clothing in New Town. Can we do a collaboration with Depop? And me and might go, yeah, no, whatever or whatever. But at least it's actually giving her something as opposed to I want a job. And she's like, all right, cool. But it's just it's that one way thing. So don't devalue the like incredible uh, creativity and entrepreneurship that this generation has. And as I say, you can do it from your living room or like your local neighborhood. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, going off that, I'm gonna, you just spoke about, you've all sp spoken about networking and such, but um, there's a question asking, what's the best way to not come off too forward? Or, you know, what's the best way to build those relationships that aren't just like one way, do you say? Janella, did you wanna um, come in? Yeah, I think for me, I I don't want to come off in like a negative way, but I think networking sometimes in, especially in media, like you, everyone kind of knows each other, um, especially when you work from, you know, agency to agency and you kind of interact with other companies. And I think 
for me, I'm, I don't like to be inauthentic. I don't like to pretend and I guess network like, um, Jonathan said for network's sake, like I don't want to just have, have coffee with you so I can get a job. Um, you know, I think like, you know, Natalia said before is make friends, build those communication. But for me, going back to the previous question as well with COVID, if anything, it's been an advantage for my, for social media as an industry, we've seen digital media e-commerce really spike up during this time. And if anything, again, like being young adults and being in uni, this is the time to really, um, develop your skills and your expertise in your space and even like entrepreneurship like I have seen so many of my friends who are younger than me start building their own brands building their own businesses all from Instagram TikTok you know don't um underestimate the power of digital media at this rate and if anything jump on it right now um it's such a good time to really explore those possibilities and actually start networking online i think if anything it's easier to zoom with someone and network than to you know bring them out on a coffee so take advantage of going and looking at LinkedIn, building up your LinkedIn profile. Um, I know some people think, oh, it's just LinkedIn. I think it's actually a good platform to start building your professional portfolio. Uh, put any content there, anything you've done, any volunteer work. People might actually come to you, if anything, on your inboxes from the experience you've gained there. Your Instagram, build up your portfolios. I'm not saying everyone here should become a fashion influencer and start selling yourself. But I definitely see that there is power in building your online portfolio while being active and just emailing people um i don't know i could be wrong i feel like you don't need to you shouldn't worry too much about coming off so strong because if you're hitting the right people those people will want to pass down their wisdom and their knowledge to you because we have been in your position in uni before you know like i think in terms of looking up to someone i i don't imagine you emailing someone and they're like well this person's crazy if anything when someone emails you from my perspective i've had a lot of people email me and message me about my career, I actually think, okay, this is a great place to network, to actually educate people and to support one another. Um, so if, yeah, I think don't worry about coming off too strong. Send a nice email, send a um, LinkedIn message, say, hey, you know, I'm really looking for a new job. What's it like working in an industry? Ask questions. And this is like, you know, I think communicators, sometimes most of us like to talk about ourselves. So I feel like people aren't usually that concerned about feeling, you know, um, concerned about giving you wisdom or um, networking because they want to also build their skills. So I think sometimes we feel like it's scary and it's a scary world and getting to meet people and networking is a scary place, but it's really not. Um, it's just people who have worked hard and got in their industries. Like even in this panel, there's so many um, great people who have so much wisdom and knowledge who are willing to impart that to, you know, us today. And I think that's already a sentiment to how people want to support one another, especially during COVID. And um, yeah, just looking at the landscape, like I've even just DM'd cafes and businesses who want help on their social media sites and everything. So there's so much opportunity out there and um, don't be afraid to come off too strong. Just be yourself, be authentic, be humble and have that integrity. And I feel like the right people will respond and, and talk to you. Thanks so much, Danella. Can I add to that as well? Um, completely agree with what Danella said. Um, but also networking or making friends does not have to be really formalized. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot of social media friends that I've never met in real life. And it's just because we like guess each other up in comments on like Instagram photos and like, you know, then that gets translated into TikTok or Facebook or whatever it is. Um, where if you think about when you're publishing something on social media, like you want people to engage with your stuff. So in order to do that, you need to engage with other people's stuff. Um, and, you know, it makes you feel good when people comment on your stuff and they're like, oh my God, I really resonate with this thing you said, or, you know, I love how you did this. Um, I'm really into like photography as well. So I'll have people um, like social media friends being like, you know, how did you edit this? Or like, did you use a filter? Or like, what camera did you use? What time did you, you know what I mean? So we're asking each other questions about the content that we make. Um, and then that kind of like, you know, opens up, I guess, like more of a forum and like platform and um, a relationship, right? 
So I've slid into so many people's DMs being like, really appreciate your content. I love when you said this on, you know, this picture or whatever it is. And then we become friends and then they, you know, comment on my stuff and vice versa. Like you can do that. Like that I think is like a really great way to make friends online authentically. And there's always something that you're interested in. Like if you're into sport, like find people who are making sports content, like that are in your city or, you know, someone that you really admire. If you're, you know, into fashion, there's so many people doing fashion content, like whatever it is, make friends. Um, and then, you know, that kind of like, when you get to the point where you are like looking for a job or whatever, you've probably already got insight to like which companies different people work for. And then you've already had like maybe six months of like digital communication where you can be like, Hey man, I know that you work at like, I don't know, Instagram. Like I was wondering like, what's the best way to kind of get your foot in the door? Like, is there internship programs? Do you know of any roles going? And then they're, they're going to be in the position to be like, Oh my God. Yeah. Like here's the HR woman. Like here's her email. Feel free to say that I referred you. Like if you've already done the legwork in building a relationship, it's not really a big ask at that point, you know, like, it's just like friends, like you do with friends change value. So I wouldn't even think of it like too over the top. Although I always laugh um, because I feel like there's a time where there's probably like a Jenna Price lecture on like networking because I get like 20 different like people add me on LinkedIn that do uh, journalism at UTS Communications, um, which is so fun. Like I'm so happy to connect with people on LinkedIn, but like only I think like one person has ever reached out to me to be like, hey, I'm at UTS, I'm studying comms. I know you went to UTS. I would love to know more about like how you got to where you are. Do you have time for a coffee? Like only one person's done that where I've got like, I don't know, 50 LinkedIn requests. So it's like, how can you actually make a genuine connection? Like that's not just for show in like upping the amount of people that follow you on LinkedIn, you know? I also want to add to that. Like I totally agree. Like I haven't really commented on the make friends thing, but I honestly made most of my connections at the club and at gigs. Like I honestly just like real life friendships. And I think when people think about networking, they're always thinking about networking above them. I always was like, oh yeah, you've got to like talk to someone that's like a marketing manager or a comms manager, a manager, an adult. But like some of my best connections were literally at school with me, at the club with me, they're the same age as me. And then like eventually we all grew up and got jobs and like those people I've met again in the industry, whether it's like on the other side of the desk or within my working environment. So like, don't always think about networking. Like you have to like network with senior people. Like networking is like hanging out with your uni mates, like going to gigs. Like the other, I guess the other side of that is like actually show up. Like if you want to work for someone or you want to work somewhere or in an industry, like go to those events. It's like how people always say like, go to people's gigs. If you love live music so much and you want to work in the music industry, literally go to the gigs. Like I was like a really shit DJ and that's why I was at the club. And it was like, this is how I participate in this. And then naturally it's like, I worked my way into like music PR because I was part of the scene. And like, if you love sport, like go to a sporting, like sporting match, like don't just like sit around saying you want to work in the industry. Like you learn so much like being on the ground. Like I said, like, if I hadn't been selling on Depop, I wouldn't even know how to use it. So how could I sell it? Um, and I think that's really important. Like just don't think that networking or networking or making friends is like making friends with people that are already established. Cause like the people around you and the people in the zoom call are probably going to be your industry peers and like colleagues one day. And like, you know, I just thinking about it now, if you have really great work, like people come to you. Like I made, one of my friends, Sharon, like she went to UTS and she was an editor of um, Vertigo and I picked up Vertigo one day and I was like, what the hell, this is such a good publication. And then I saw her writing for like a friend's blog and like I hit her up wanting to have a coffee with her because I was like, oh my God, I saw that you were editor of this uni magazine. Like I want to know you. And, you know, like we had a natural friendship off the back of that, which like, you know, like I'm going to co-sign her if, you know, she was applying for a job somewhere. So I think it's definitely a testament to like, just do your thing and like the right people will find you. I think that's so interesting about like just friendships you have at uni. I mean, I had a really, it was only when I was looking back now on people I met at uni and a really good example of that 
is, I don't know whether you guys have heard of it, there's a thing called the Web Summit, which is this like massive, I think it's like the biggest tech summit in the world. But the guy who basically, two guys who founded that were in my year at uni who sold advertising for our uni newspaper. And I remember when I left uni in the middle of the recession and I bumped into him, I'm like, what are you doing? And they were like, oh, we're trying to get this tech um, conference going and we've got a uni lecture room booked. And like, I, I'm ashamed to admit this, but internally I was like, all right, good luck with that lad, see how that goes. And it's now worth like millions and it employs hundreds of people um, and it's based in Lisbon. So May's point spot on, like you never know who you're gonna meet. and. I actually look back on uni and I studied way too hard um, in terms of it's so important to get good grades, but I'm a bit of an introvert actually. And I really think sometimes I should have and could have gone out to gigs and I probably worry too much about, oh, like I don't want to go to this by myself. I'm so, you know, I'll look like a loser. That's just so stupid. Like looking back now, it's just like, if you want to go and do it, do it. And like Mia said, like, if you want to go, and get involved in music you go or like Natalia was saying like you you know you make so many amazing connections online and and, and support each other so huge huge advice like do not turn down that coffee do not turn down uh, those opportunities because they're there and they're going to lead to something if, if the worst thing that comes out of it you make a really cool friend that's pretty cool I think Thank you so much. All great responses. Um, we probably only have time for one more question, so I'm going to try and combine two. Um, so something obviously it's very topical right now is, um, you know, the job sphere during the pandemic. So how do you think, you know, moving on for us, especially over the next year, you know, some of us are now penultimate uni year and, um, sorry i'm just trying to find uh oh yeah so what do you think about um like doing digital internships or getting experience you know in a in a job sphere that's not really going to be normal i guess and do you think specializing in you know just one field or trying to really broaden yourself out like what advice would you give around that Um, I would say for the job sphere and kind of um, firstly for me working in social media obviously I get touched like I work with the marketing manager the PR teams the product team so I get to be involved in a lot of touch points so I'm not just stuck doing Instagram all the time I think a lot of people think that's my job is just scroll on Instagram every single day but um Surprisingly, when you work in, you know, a, a job or when you work in a field, you get exposed to so many different, you know, areas of communication and you're not just limited to one. So I know there was a couple of questions there about going to uni and studying different degrees. And I, and I 100% encourage um, education and, you know, trying different degrees. But I know for me, I kind of grappled with, you know, should I do a business degree? Should I do a double? Should I do international studies? And there was a lot of options for me that I could have just kept adding on. But in the end, I stuck to getting, you know, working in the job I have now. And I learned that there are so many other gateways and I don't have to just be limited to one. And I, I'm not just limited to social media marketing. So I think even when you do gain your experience in whatever it is, even if you're in an internship or even if you're in a part-time job, um, you know, whether it's an agency or a, a client base or whatever, is try to get in touch with other touch points of the business, whether it's marketing, whether it's PR or whatever, because you do get to cross collaborate. So you're not, you know, you're building up skills in different areas. Don't think just because it's your title, that's all you're going to be stuck to. There's a lot of different options and it's just about whether or not you're willing to, you know, network, communicate, get out there, ask questions. Even when you start working, you can network in your own company, right? And you can actually um, learn from other people. I know I have a friend from e-coms and we want to even do like a skill share and start giving each other advice and practical tips and you know her with her digital um e-commerce platform whereas you know i do social media so i don't think you're ever limited to one when you start working i think that was one of my biggest concerns in uni and i totally get it is like once i'm getting the job am i stuck there forever you're not um like jonathan was a teacher and look where you know he's doing afl now so you're really not limited when you start working but that being said feel free to take courses and constantly educate and elevate your skills um, 
you know, with social media, there's Facebook blueprint, there's Twitter flight schools, there's aim courses. There's so many materials out there, especially now with digital, uh, with everything happening. So many, uh, online forums are giving free courses. TAFE was doing free courses. Like there's so many things you can learn so much information. I think with our generation, that's what's so good is that the internet is just there for you to learn and um, to network, to do all these things just in the palm of your hands or on your screen. In terms of digital internships, I think that's still an internship. There is, if anything, it's like you you're able, if you're able to learn during this environment, that's also a valuable skill that you can take into your next job, right? Like people will be like, wow, you're able to pivot really quickly. Even with me now, I'm, I'm technically doing a online job because I haven't been in the office for like four months. Um, so I've been doing everything remotely. I've had to communicate remotely. So it's also a skill to be able to work at home, to be able to, you know, that's something you have to develop to be disciplined. So I don't think digital internships are less than a normal internship. Um, I think that also gives you the capacity and time to work on even multiple internships. I know my friend did an internship, a job, and then, I mean, I don't overwork yourself, obviously, but she's doing internships, she's starting her own business, and then she's working part-time in another um, social media company. So she's been able to do all of that because she's, doing everything online so yeah don't even just limit yourself to one level of experience try to expand and look at other avenues whether it is you know trialing uh, e-commerce business and doing your own startup or whatever and I think during uni you know I'm you know, a fresh, I've graduated around three years ago, or four years ago now. Um, I'm still, you know, fresh out of uni in a way. But even now looking back, I regret so much not doing so many different internships and gaining more experience in uni and trial and error. Because I think at uni is really the time where you can experiment, where you can do all this stuff. And I'm not saying now you can't, I definitely could. Um, if I, you know, we all can, no matter how old you are. But I think in uni, you have the time and you don't have as many responsibilities as you would as you get older. So use the time wisely, learn how to time manage, learn how to, um, you know, list your priorities by day. And I think gaining your skills is how you gaining experience is how you gain your skills and your confidence as well. Um, and yeah, I think don't waste the opportunity you have now. Don't just because it's COVID. I, I, I just advocate it so much because I've seen people around me just, take what they have and take what their skills, even just little skills they had. Like my friend who's opening her own business, she had no product marketing experience. She had no SEO, no social media. All she wanted to do is sell things like online on Instagram. She just wanted to sell a little jewelry. And I was like, go for it. And her business has grown really quickly. And I was, and it's all from digital marketing. It's all from e-commerce. It wasn't even like she got 50 million influencers. She just did it um, with, little to no money. So there is just so much variety out there. So don't be afraid to dabble in little things, dabble in little passions, talk to people in different industries and um, network because all of this time that you have now, it's not going to waste. Um, and I think anxiety can take over a lot of times when you're afraid of the current climate and everything. I think just focus one step at a time. Don't let everything overwhelm you in one go. Just, you know, list out what you want to do, list out the key priorities, what your goals are, and actually start to, um, like what Mia said, manifested is what you want to do. Because in the end, you look back and, you know, you're going to regret it if you don't do what you're passionate about, try different things, meet new people. Like you're really going to regret it. So might as well do it now, I think. The other thing, if I could, just to build on that is we, we haven't really discussed it, but um, like do not fear rejection um, at all because I can assure you that even now I my walls are, are papered with rejection emails and the dreaded automated email. Like even now, and I, I'm not saying I'm anything special, I'm not, but I will still get rejected and I feel like I've, I've reached a relatively good level in my career. So never take it personally and um, it's not it's just it's just part of part of life and it's a really really hard thing to to happen after uni um a lot of the time sometimes you don't get those lucky breaks and I certainly had to work in some pretty weird jobs um after uni I had a stint in advertising flogging Kellogg's writing adverts for Kellogg's Cocoa Pops which definitely wasn't what I dreamt of doing but do you know what like that opportunity led to another opportunity 
um, which got me where I was. So I would just say, build that resilience, which isn't easy because it's a hard period when you leave uni because you've been told what to do at school, study hard, get your HSC. Oh, I want to go to UTS. Cool. You work hard at UTS, you get the best possible grades. Then it's like, oh, wow. Now what? So just don't, don't worry about it because it hits everybody. Um, and I think really good advice was just Danella just saying like, if it's something small you're passionate about, just go for it. Like, don't wait for somebody's permission. Like, if it's selling jewelry on Instagram, that's awesome. Like, just go for it because it's valid experience. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, I think one of the things that has really, like, kept me afloat in my career, because it's not like you just get a job and then you keep that job and you're happy, you live happily ever after. It's, like, constant battle of, like, where you're going to go with your career next. So, like, the thing that's kept me strong and thriving is very much, like, adaptability. Like, I think COVID, obviously, like, it's such a, like, sad time. Um, but, like, I think we just have to, like, build this resilience, as Jonathan said. Like, it's just another, another pivot. Like, I've pivoted so much in my career. Like, I think when I first started in the industry, I was doing music PR when newspapers were going digital for the first time like even to like going online. It wasn't even like a website that was functional. And that was just like the biggest thing ever. And then when I worked in media, it was like, oh my God, what's the problem? Like no one's like really using websites anymore. We're pivoting to social. And then it was the pivot to video and it's the pivot to this and that. And like right now it's like everything is pivoting to online because we can't be out in the real world. So we're now like experts at Zoom and like TikTok and YouTube and vlogging and like all these crazy things. But like, I mean, honestly, you just have to adapt. And like, one of the biggest things that I've probably done is just like throw myself at new trends and throw myself at new technology because there's nothing worse than like pivoting late. Um, so I would just say like, go for it. Um, and yeah, like in terms of the digital internship, like that's just an evolution of a real internship. Like if anything, it's just like doing exactly what you would in like a normal office environment except you don't have to put pants on now so like why not take that opportunity you're definitely gonna get something out of it you're still going to be able to network you're still going to be able to like have that on your resume like I know heaps of people that are doing um as Nella said like there's so much free material out there like Harvard is literally doing like free degrees you just don't get the piece of paper at the end so like why not take advantage of that obviously you're you're studying at UTS like that is such like a privilege um, to be able to study. I mean, I've just recently like picked up my master's again. Like I studied comms, didn't do well, went back and studied comms. And I, I only picked up my master's. Like I kind of took a break for like a year. Um, but the reason I decided to do further study, like I think I saw someone asking about whether further study um, is worthwhile. Like I decided to do further study because I knew that marketing is what I want to continue doing and like I had been doing it so if anything it's just to like finesse my skills in the jobs that I have and will continue to have moving forward um and that's because I have that assurance that like marketing is what I do what I want to do so I mean I would say that if you're going to do further study definitely do it when you're sure and certain that like it will have a direct impact on what it is that you want to do with your career or do something that like is genuinely fun like I know a lot of people that have like you know, that work in marketing that have then like done their master's in psychology. One of my friends is now at honors because she wanted to understand consumers and like their behaviors to impact like the way that she markets. So yeah, I would probably like, if you're going to look at further study, like just make sure you actually enjoy it because like you've gone through the hard yards in your first degree, but like also you're still in your degree. So like maybe just focus on right now, like as Jonathan said, like there's no point like stressing about the future at this point, the future is so unknown like what's the point of worrying about it the other thing that i would say is that um i wouldn't get too hung up about like the concept of an internship um because i i did one internship it wasn't in media um and it was fine i knew a lot of people that did really shitty internships and just hated it um and spent like three days a week dreading going into like some small agency that didn't have enough work for them. Um, I would kind of look at experience more as like Jonathan said, like projects. So like, you know, if you want to be a creator, like if you want to make video, if you want to write, if you want to make podcasts, like whatever it is that you're, you want to create, just like do it. And, you know, you put it up, under your own like name, under your own channels, all over social media. Um, 
you know, because you figure out other skills there, right? You figure out like, how do you actually grow a um, social audience? You figure out what is it about my content that's sticking and what is not sticking? Like the more that you can do, the more that you actually learn. Um, and, you know, for the company that I work at, it's way more impressive if we're looking to hire a video editor. It's way more impressive for someone to be like, hey, I've got like 20,000 subs on YouTube than it is to be like, hey, I've got a degree in like, um, uh, what's, the, what's the production media degree called again? At, at you know, UTS or whatever. Like media. that's like, yeah, media production. Like that's relevant. But like if you can show that you actually have some success like on the ground in the fit, like doing what it is, like you're, you're going to stand out. Um, I've never once been asked to produce my degree ever. No one has once asked me like what my marks were. Um, like it's, it was great and I learned a lot. Um, but I think a lot of the time, like having a degree is just kind of like ticking a box for HR. Um, it's more about like, what's going to make you stand out. Um, are you going to be a good cultural fit? Are you going to bring something that the rest of the team doesn't have? Um, so I think that, and especially as I get older, I'm like less worried about making something that's perfect and more worried about putting more and more work out there because then I can iterate and learn, um, and, and see what works, especially with like, you know, um, social platforms and social trends move so quickly. Like, even if you've seen like the, you know, the amount of trends that have like come and gone on TikTok, like, and that's been around for what, like two seconds. Like if you can keep your finger on the pulse um, and know what's working at the moment and why that's going to be so much more useful than whether you did like a three month internship, you know, where you made coffee half the time, but no, no shade to that. Like that's good experience too, if that's where you want to go. But I think that if you want to make like, just make. Thanks so much, Natalia. I think that's something, something that stuck with me through this is that, it's in comms, especially it's our experience that will set us apart. And that's why we really value all you guys coming on and talking about your experience. Cause it's, you know, each of us is going to learn something different from each person. Um, and on that note, we've actually come to the end. Unfortunately, we're pretty much right on time, but on behalf of myself and everyone here today, I would just like to say the biggest thank you. You know, we are so lucky. It's not every day that we get people from Depop, Buzzfeed, Samsung and the AFL. So we're really, really grateful. Sending lots of virtual um, claps and handshakes your way. Um, so thank you again. And I'll, I'll pass on to Emma to close. Um, yeah. I also just want to say a huge thank you to Jonathan, Mia, Danella and Natalia. I think you gave some really practical career advice. Um, I wish that I had listened to this panel when I was a graduating comm student from UTS because I probably would have found it really helpful. Um, but yeah, especially right now with all these, you know, this kind of situation, I think students really appreciate you taking the time out to come and chat to them about actually what the career might look like. So thank you. And I also want to say a big thank you to UTSOC for making this panel happen and especially to Amy for organizing all the panelists and hosting. Uh, just an FYI to all you guys, uh, we will be sending through an email with a, a post-event survey. Please complete it. A winner will also be chosen at random to receive a $50 Visa gift card if you do complete it. Um, and that's because we really value your feedback and we need to know how to improve these events to make them better for you. So please fill it out. Uh, the recording of this video will also be made uh, available to UTSOC. Uh, we just need to edit it, make it look pretty, um, and then UTSOC can distribute that out on their socials and to their members. If you aren't signed up to UTSOC yet, I highly recommend that you do, so you'll kind of get um, all their info first. All right, so thank you everyone for coming. Thanks thank you everyone. So much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.